Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. Today, we're going to be solving multi-step equations. Our essential question is, how are inverse operations used to solve equations? But this time, our equations are going to be a little more complicated and will take more work to get them done. So let's see what you need to get started today. You'll need something to write with, either a pen or pencil. Your Jaguar jots starting on page five. It'll say 1.2, solving multi-step equations at the top a calculator, either on your computer, a phone, or standalone, and your problem solving skills as always. So let's get started. So let's review what solve means. Solve means that you need to isolate the variable. And if you forgot what isolate means, isolate means to get it alone or by itself. So let's look at our first equation. This time it shows up as a word problem. The height in t inches of a plant after t days is one half t plus six. After how many days is the plant 21 inches tall? So we want to know when this expression, one half t plus six is equal to 21. And we are going to put in our road. So remember we use this idea of a road to help us remember to do the same thing to both sides of an equation. So we ask ourselves, what was the last thing that happened to T? And the last thing that happened to T was that we added six to both sides. So one way to do this is to do something that I call head speak. So what the head speak does is we start with T and we ask ourselves what first happened to T? So if we had T alone, we multiplied by one half. And then after we multiplied by one half, we added six. In order to undo, to get back to T, we have to go in reverse order. So this is what happened to T as we move down. And now we're going to undo that work. So the inverse operation to add is subtract. So now we are going to subtract six. So we are going to go in reverse order. So six minus six is zero. So we have one half T is equal to 15. And then we come back to our head speak and we see that we have multiplying by one half. So the inverse operation of multiplication is division and we're going to divide by one half. But we have to go back to understanding fractions now. And we know that when we divide by a fraction, we really multiply by the reciprocal. So we are going to multiply by the reciprocal of one half, which is two over one or just two. So now we have two over two or two divided by two, which is one. So we're left with T and 15 times two, which is 30. So we've solved our equation, but we have not answered our actual problem. Our problem wants to know after how many days is the plant 21 inches tall? And so this is after 30 days. So what this says is the plant started at six inches and then each day it grew half an inch. So we could have figured this out by actually just adding half an inch until we got to 30 days. So let's look at some more examples. In this example, we have something interesting happening with our problem. We see that we have two M's. So let's draw on our road and start looking. So let's look at what's happening on each side of the road. When we look at this side of the road, we see that we have two M's. We need to combine our like terms so that we can start looking at the problem in its simplest form. If I have two M's here and four M's here, I have a total of six M's because two plus four is six. But I always write down the rest of the problem so that I have my complete equation. So let's look at the idea of this on a balance beam. Remember each side of the equal sign is always equal. So what we did was imagine that we have little boxes that we're putting everything in. And right now each of these are in individual boxes. And what we did was we just combined all of our M's into the same box. So this is what I'm saying. These are each in individual boxes. And what I did was I noticed that these were the same. And so I just took and I put them into the same box. And our balance stays perfectly balanced. 
Now I want to complete this problem by keeping everything in balance. This is now much more similar to the problem we did above. And I want to get my M by itself. I know that the first thing I did to M when I made the problem was I multiplied by six and then I added five, which means I need to work in reverse order. So I need to get rid of the five first and then the six. So in order to get rid of a positive five or an adding of five, I need to subtract five from both sides. If I only took it off this one side, this side would suddenly be five lighter and then the balance would come undone. So this is zero and I'm left with six M on this side and a negative eight on this side. This is now a one step equation. So now I can just solve this like a one step equation. Six times M, I undo multiplication with division, but I'm not done with this problem because now I need to simplify. I know that both eight and six are divisible by two. Eight divided by two, negative eight divided by two is a negative four. And six divided by two is a three. So my answer is negative four thirds. So what is the first thing you should do when you see more than one variable on the same side of the equation? That is a problem like this. So what did we do to go from here to here? We combine like terms. So let's look at another problem. This problem now has added another layer of complexity by adding in parentheses. Parentheses mean multiply. This is a case called distributive property. So what I have to do is I have to multiply my negative four times everything in the parentheses. Negative four times positive three is a negative G, 12 G. This is a negative five. That's what we're going to treat that like for this multiplication. So negative four times a negative five is a positive 20. And then I have to copy down everything else that wasn't changed so that the equation stays balanced. We always copy down everything because we have to make sure that the entire math sentence is there. That would be like reading only part of a sentence when I'm reading a book and I don't want to do that. So now I have to look for any like terms and I see some, but I'm going to rewrite this and put my like terms together to make it just a little bit easier to follow. So I have a negative 12 G and here's my 10 G. I'm going to move that over plus 20 equals 19. So negative 12 plus 10. So what I am paying attention to are just the coefficients. So negative 12 plus 10 is a negative 2G. And then again, copy down the parts that didn't change. So I cannot touch that negative 2 until the 20 has been moved. So how do we make that go away? We're going to subtract. So that's zero, and then that goes right down, negative 2g equals 19 minus 20 is a negative 1. Now we can mess with this. So how do we undo multiplication? How do we undo multiplication? We undo multiplication with division. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. g is equal to one half. Why is it a positive one half? Because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. Let's look at this last problem. So this last problem here, it's a word problem. This is where we can look at some of our distributive property and parentheses and things like that in a word problem. You've scored a seven, 10, eight, and nine on four different quizzes, write and solve an equation to find the score you need on the fifth quiz so that your mean score is eight. So let's look at this. We know that when we end, we want to have an eight. And how do we find means? Well, means are just averages. So we are going to add up a seven, a 10, an eight, a nine, and an unknown score and divide it by all of it by five. 
because there's one, two, three, four, five scores. Another way that we could have written this was one fifth of seven plus 10 plus eight plus nine plus X. Dividing by five is the same as multiplying by one fifth. I like this way better because that's how most of us, whoops, <laughs> that's how most of us think of means. So this is dividing. This is a great big grouping symbol right here. So we can get rid of that pretty quickly after I draw on my road. How do I undo division? I undo division by multiplication. So that's one and five times eight is 40. And then I have this big mess, seven plus 10 plus eight plus nine plus X. So 40 equals 34 plus X. Subtract 34 from both sides. Six is X. But it's a word problem, which means my answer needs to be a sentence. So I want you to try to write that sentence and then come on back. I need a score of six on the next quiz. Awesome. So that's it for today. What I would like you to do is go back through your notes and I would like you to write down two important things that you learned today over in the margins, over here in the margins, and be ready to talk about this in class. Thank you so much for showing up and be kind to each other because we can always use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye now.